He was having a huge youth event for school, um, giving away everything he could get his hands on to the kids for school. And we came out here, he asked me, come be a, a sponsor and set your booth up for your t-shirts. And I was like, sure. So I came out and set up and they had quite a few people come through that day. And while we were standing on the property, Dan goes, we should put a tent here. Let me find Brother Joe. <laughs> So we thank the Lord for them giving us the ability to be here in this property. And guess what? The Holy Spirit flows in this property every single day. It makes it even more awesome. Amen. Amen. And lots and lots of people pass by this place. Bring the whole bottle. So we're super excited about that. So anyway, so that's where the restrooms are. Um, they're going to come sing a little bit. We'll receive an offering. Maybe they'll sing a little bit more. I don't know what they got planned. But... Um, and then Pastor Jack is with us tonight. Life Family Church, give him a hand. Amen. We're super. I'm going to keep saying super because it's super. It's a little loud. I'm loud. Amen. Thank you. So we're going to open in prayer and um, ask the Lord to bless tonight. And I hope that you came expecting. Amen. I'm just going to say real quick, in the last three or four days, like everything you can imagine could possibly happen has happened. The devil is just so mad because he knows something good is about to happen right here. I just have to give God praise. Miss Martha is a lady that I take care of. She goes to our church. They said she was having a heart attack and an AFib on Saturday. Sunday they said, we don't see no heart attack and you can go home. Isn't God good? Amen. She's 89 years old and lives on her own. So isn't God good? Yet Saturday evening around 6.30, my daughter called and said, Mom, my house is on fire. My heart sank and then my voice began to say, No, I don't think so, devil. Not today. In the name of Jesus. And I started declaring the word of God over the house. Um, seven fire trucks, three ambulances, and two battalion chiefs showed up to my daughter's house within minutes. The fire was out, and it only damaged one room. There's no damage anywhere in the house but that one room. Come on, God is good. My daughter said, Mom, we were just discussing about leaving to go to dinner. And she said, we had had a busy day, and I said I was tired, and we could let DoorDash do the delivery. And she said, if we weren't home, we'd have lost everything. But God, He has a plan, and He works out everything for us. Amen. So I'm so grateful for those things. And I guarantee you, if I walked around this room and started talking to you, you've, you've come with some adversity this week because the devil didn't want you to come to the tent this week. Amen. But guess what? He didn't win. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell him. He didn't win. We're here. We're going to have a good time tonight. So let's pray. And ask the Lord to bless, and we're going to get them to come up and bless y'all and some songs and worship. And we, I'm just excited tonight. Amen. Amen. Would you stand to your feet with me? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you tonight, Lord, for being in this tent revival, for the people of God under this tent, for the souls that will be saved under this tent this week, for the bodies that will be healed under this tent this week, and the people of God filled with the Holy Ghost in, under this tent this week. And God, we call it done in the name of Jesus. We ask you to bless every person that's here, those that are on the way, and every night to follow in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. All right, if I can have the worship team. Would y'all help me welcome um, Life Family Church worship team. guys excited tonight? God's going to do some amazing, amazing things in this place. If you're ready to receive, amen? All right, one, two, three, four.
more chains, no more bondage, cause I am free. No more chains, no more bondage, I am free Your blood has set me free I got no more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage, I am free Leaping, and I'm scared. 
Thank you. 
tu río Piénsame ya en las aguas que me los pensar Tiene sentir tu gozo Tiene sentir tu río Stretch forth thy hand to heal grand signs and wonders by the holy child Jesus. Let not one person leave the same as they came. For you are everything and we are nothing. Lord, we love you, we bless you. Even though the world's on fire, we're on fire with the Holy Ghost. We thank you for your word tonight. Thank you that your word is the very foundation in which we launch our life upon. And thank you for the mighty Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome, sir, to come and do whatever you desire to do. We won't stop you here to you in any way. In the mighty name of Jesus. And God's powerful people said. Amen. God's powerful people said. Amen. Well, before you're seated, why don't you shake a few hands as Pastor Tina is coming up. Or Bishop Epps is coming up. Or Bishop or Mrs. Bishop is coming up. <laughs> Pastor Tina. Praise the Lord. All right, we're going to do. Mm -hmm. I don't know where they are, but somebody will find them. You got them? All right. Pastor said there was some. That's it right there. Amen. All righty. So we have a free tent and we have free property, but we do have expenses. And we do like to bless those that come and bless us. So as you give tonight, put that in mind. Um, we did send some postcards out. Most of our, our advertisement nowadays goes social media. Um, but there are still a selected few that choose not to. And so we send some postcards out. And Jack, we were really surprised. They went double on the postage on them. Yeah. So it cost a little more to get them out. And we did pay the crew to put this tent up. My dad is 79 going on 30. And if he had his way, he would do it all. But mom says, no, sir, you're going to let the, the other people take care of this. So 
we want we, we appreciate them helping us with that but they we did pay their crew to put it up so it, it is professionally done now can i tell y'all i don't know if y'all know that my dad was a tent renter he rented tents for 10 years when i was young so he's put up thousands of tents so he could do it if he if we let him so we want you to give tonight um the gentlemen have some envelopes Pastor said, if you just, each, each of you or some of you got just gave $20, you'd be surprised how far it would go. And you say, Tina, I have a dollar. Okay, put a dollar in. Guess what? God will take a dollar and make it $100. When I was a young girl, Dad said we were in a tent revival in the middle of a town. There was hardly any money coming in. And he said, I don't know how we're going to make it, but we're going to keep doing the revival. Well, every night there was a dollar or two in the offering plate. And Dad said... Well, we're just going to trust the Lord. Well, then one night, he didn't even look at the offer, and he just threw it in the cabinet and went on about his business. Left, went out to eat with some people. Mom said about 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning, she said, Johnny, did you check that offering? He says, oh, it's out there in the podium. He went out there and got it, dumped it, and every dollar that was in there was now $100. Hallelujah. So there was like seven, $800 in that offering that was a few dollars when he stuck it in the coat. Can God do it? Yes. He can, do, he can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can think or ask. So as you give tonight, just pray over it. I believe when we agree together in prayer, God will make, make it multiply and meet the need. Amen? We appreciate Pastor Jack and their church. Um, they're kind of like my other church. Amen. I, I'm, I work as much as they do in our church and their church, so it's hard to get together, but I make my way over there every now and then. Amen. Yeah, I'm, they're stuck with me. I'm LCU all the way, yeah. And also, Mom wants you to know, you can write the checks out to FGT, not GTE. And um, if you have a debit card, a lot of people don't carry cash. Dad says, we can take that money out of your account faster than Superman can jump over a building. So just, you can fill out the information. Please include... All the numbers, you know, when you call what they expect, we also need your zip code. And a phone number would be nice in case for some reason I'm missing something. So if you choose to give that way, you can through the envelope, all right? Amen. Anybody can just fill that out and give $1,000 and we'll be good. Hallelujah. All right, let's bless the offering. We thank the Lord for the ushers that are helping tonight. If you want to raise your hand, they'll bring you an envelope. Did you already do that? Amen. All right. All right, hold your offering in your hand. Let's bless it. Father, I thank you tonight for the abundance of your goodness in our life. I thank you for all of the favor. Lord, this world is confused why everything is chaotic, but God, your people will stand firm and strong. And God, I thank you for meeting every need. Lord, the seed they sow tonight, Lord, I pray that it'll come back to them a hundredfold, even in the next few days. In Jesus' name, I call it done. Amen. Amen. All right. Give and let the Lord bless you tonight. Of all things. God, you are the greatest. You're the greatest. You're the greatest.
So I give my praise to you. We praise the God you are faithful and true. And no one can do like you. Like you. You're awesome in all that you do. So I give my praise to you. We praise the God you are amazing. Has he been good to you? Yeah. Yeah, he gets better and better and better. You can be seated if you can. I'm not going to be too long tonight, about four or five hours or so. Just, just kidding. Just kidding. It's, just, it's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> if you have your Bibles with you, open it up to the book of Haggai, chapter 2. Very interesting times we're living in, isn't it? You know? We're living in a time where there's a war in Ukraine. We're living in a time where there's a war in Israel. We're living in a time where China might be invading Taiwan. We're living in a time where the United States of America is being drawn into all of these wars and rumors of wars. It shouldn't surprise us. In the book of Matthew, chapter 24, it talks about in the last days, you know, there will be wars, rumors of wars and pestilence, right? Earthquakes in various places. So it shouldn't shock us because God has shown us what's to come. But also in the last days, we're promised the greatest outpouring of the Spirit of God that the church in the world has ever seen since the day of Pentecost. It'll be an accumulation of every revival, every move of God since the day of Pentecost, an accumulation, one huge thrust that will go around the world. Because the Bible says that the whole earth will be filled with the glory of God. Yes. Isn't that right? Right. Do you not think that if a virus can go around the world, the glory of God cannot go around the world? Woo! Absolutely. Absolutely. Woo! So it's exciting times. The prophets of old long to be a part of the days that you and I are living in. These aren't the woe is days, the sad days. These are the happy days, the joyous days. Because the church is being birthed brand new. He's raising up a remnant. He's, he's raising up a new breed of believers full of the Holy Ghost, full of the Word of God. Committed. Dedicated. Wow. Come on, right? Committed, dedicated. Dedicated wow. to the church. Why? Because he's coming back for a glorious church. Yes. Without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. That's what glory, yeah. that's what, right? A glorious church. Nothing lacking, nothing broken, preserved from destruction. I've got good news for you, church. The gates of hell will not prevail against us. Come on, hello, somebody. And you're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath, and you're going over. And he's never seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. And I've read the end of the book. Guess what happens? We win. Hallelujah. Now, in the book of Haggai, chapter 2, wow. it says this, Haggai, chapter 2, and we're going to pick it up in verse number 6, and it says, now, of course, Haggai was a minor prophet, so he's getting ready to say the word of the Lord. He's getting ready to speak on the behalf of God Almighty. And he says this, for thus says the Lord of hosts, yet once in a little while I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations. Yeah. Would you agree that all nations are being shaken right now? Yes, nations we know about and nations that we don't know about. Amen. And I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come. And we know the desire of all nations is peace. But peace is not going to come until the Prince of Peace shows up. Can you say amen? amen? The desire of all nations shall come and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. And the glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. And, and, I, and in this place I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. I believe there are many things that God wants to do in this shaking that's going on. Yes. Now we're living in the dispensation of the church age. We're not living in the dis dispensation of wrath. We're living in the dispensation of grace. We're living in the dispensation of the mighty Holy Ghost. What's, pre what's preserving the Antichrist from coming? It's us, the church. So there's two events that are next on God's calendar. The next event is the greatest outpouring of the church in the world has ever seen. We're, we're talking about the miraculous. We're talking about an accumulation of the supernatural. We're talking about believers laying hands on the sick, the blind seeing, the deaf hearing, the lame walking, Amen. the dead being raised. We're talking about a time that we're so full of the Holy Ghost, when you walk into the place, the glory of God comes in. I remember the story of Smith Wigglesworth. Anybody remember Smith Wigglesworth? Yeah. One time he was gone on a train, and he sat down on a train, and the person, they were five minutes into the train trip, and five minutes later, a man sitting next to him fell on the floor and said, My God, man, you convict me of sin. And Smith said nothing to him except, How are you, you doing? So we're living in those days when your shadow will pass over people. 
You'll be in Walmart. You're so full of the Holy Ghost and the Word of God. You'll be in Walmart. You pass somebody that's in a wheelchair. Suddenly they start shaking and all that kind of stuff because your shadow came across them. Come on, hold on somebody. We're living in an exciting time. It's not woe is me times. Come on, listen. We live by God's economy. We don't live by the world's economy. We're ambassadors from heaven. Come on, hello, somebody. We got the angels backing us up. We got the word of God backing us up. We got the mighty Holy Ghost backing us up. Come on, he'll never leave you, no forsake you. He'll never relax us, hold on you. Can you say amen? So we, when we talk about revival, what is revival? Because right now, there's a lot of ministries that are praying for revival. So we have to understand what revival really is to be able to have revival. Oswald J. Smith wrote a book called A Passion for Souls. And he made a quote in this book and he said, Nothing less than a genuine revival in the body of Christ that results in an awakening among the unsaved will ever satisfy the heart of God. Amen. And there's a shifting that's happening right now in the body of Christ. And we know that when COVID had hit and all that kind of stuff and all these crazy mandates and crazy stuff and it, you know, the whole goal of Satan was to shut down the church. That was a, I mean, they didn't even make it essential. They made the bar essential over the church. Come on, hello, somebody. And they tried to sit, and they had all these rules and regulations, and pastors were being arrested because they were worshiping God. I mean, they, they were t the most amazing thing about the virus was is it, only, it was only up here because if you walked into a restaurant, you could sit down and take your mask off because the virus wasn't down that low. I'm only kidding. I'm joking. I'm just joking. And when you stood up, you got to put the mask on to go to the restroom. Because the, the virus is only so far up here. When you sat down at a table, it wasn't down there. You know, if you, if you flew on an airplane, you could walk in and you had to wear a mask when you're sitting down. But if you had something to drink or peanuts, you could remove the mask, have yourself a drink and eat the peanuts. And those of you that are flown, you make sure your package of peanuts lasted for two and a half hours so you didn't have to put the mask on. It's the most amazing thing how we could get away from all these things. Hello, somebody. It, 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 you, know, you know what got me? Because I didn't shut my church down. I'm not against anybody that did. I didn't shut my church down. We went outdoors for eight weeks. We did, we did what we were doing right now for eight weeks. Come on. I knew something was wrong because how many remember the Zika virus outbreak when it hit the United States? How many remember that? They didn't shut nothing down then, did they? How about the Ebola breakout when it broke out? They didn't shut down nothing then, did they? Come on, hello, somebody. And when the swine flu hit, how about the bird flu? I mean, I didn't get the swine flu. I didn't get the bird flu because I'm not a swine or a bird. Praise God. Amen. So then, hello, somebody. No, there was something wrong. It was going on. It was the shut, Satan trying to shut up the church. To shut down. Couldn't even sing in some places because a little goblet would pass through the virus zone and then come and drop on somebody. I mean, just a terrible thing. Come on, hello, somebody. No, we're not ignorant of the devil's devices. Come on now, hello, somebody. We have victory. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. 2 Corinthians 3.16 says, Is not your body the temple of the Holy Ghost, and God there dwells in? Now, when we're talking about the subject of revival, you have to understand what it is, and, and who does it start with? Well, we know that it starts with the church. Church. Spiritual hunger triggers the move of God. Amen. Let me get a friend over here. Praise God. Amen. Spiritual hunger triggers the move of God. Amen. You have to get hungry spiritually. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6 says, If you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you'll be filled. Amen. There's something about spiritual hunger. Spiritual awakening. Yes. Now, where does this awakening begin? It begins in a person's heart. If the heart is the root of the problem, that's where God can do His greatest work. Amen. You can't even get born again unless you open the door of your heart. You have to ask the Lord Jesus to come into your heart. Isn't that right? So the heart is the root of the problem. That's where God can do His greatest work. In Ezekiel 36, 26, God said, I will take out the stony heart, put in a heart of flesh, a new spirit I will put within you. Amen. So revival begins with the church. It's revival for the church and revival for the world. Because God's heartbeat is souls. How many remember when you were first born again? Can I see your hand? I mean, maybe you were watching Billy Graham on the television. Maybe you were in a tent revival. Maybe you have a relative or friend or something. But they shared John 3.16 with you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten heart. And if whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's a great love scripture, but it's also a thou shalt not perish scripture. 
All right. right? In, in Acts 4.12, it says, There is no other name named among men by men, which men must be saved. That's the name of Jesus. In Revelation 3.20, says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man or woman open the door of his heart, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. John 14.6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can come to the Father but by me. Amen. Amen. There's something about being born again. And when you get born again, now we have a responsibility called the Great Commission. Because we see that in the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 15, Jesus commissioning the disciples and everyone that was there. He says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they will cast out devils. They will speak with new tongues. If they drink anything deadly by accident, it will not hurt them. Right? And verse 21 says, And the Lord working with them, confirming the word of God with signs, wonders, and miracles. You have to, you have to remember that God is healing today. Yeah. He's The yeah. blind are seeing. Somewhere yeah. in the world today, somebody's being raised from the dead right now. Yeah. Somewhere in the world right now, somebody's coming out of a wheelchair right now. Yeah. Some blind person is receiving sight right now. Why? Because Hebrews 13, 8 says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what he did 2,000 years ago, he's doing today. We can't forget that we are a supernatural people because we serve a supernatural God. I mean, my goodness, look what's happened in the last four or five years. We've got four blood red moons. We've got lunar eclipses. We've got solar eclipses. I mean, we are living in the last of the last days because 2,000 years ago in the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 1, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all assembled together in one place and suddenly a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind filled the whole house where they were sitting and there appeared to them cloven tongues as a fire and it sat on each one of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now when there was noise abroad, a multitude came together, every man out of every nation, Corinthians and Medes and Edomites and dwellers of Mississippi, Mesopotamian, Judean, Cappadocian, Pontus, and Asian, Phrygian, Pamphylia, parts of Libya, Bassarine, Cretes, and Romans. We do hear them speak our tongues of wonderful works of God. But others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter standing up with the eleven. Why did Peter have to stand up? Well, obviously he was on the floor. Peter standing up with the eleven said, You men of Judea, hearken to my words, for these are not drunk as you suppose, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, says God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And I will show signs in the heavens above, wonders in the earth beneath, blood, fire, and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great notable day of the Lord shall come. And in Acts 2, 2.21 says, And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We're living in those days. And we all get to be a part of what God is doing in these last days. Because it's not with the big preachers now. It's with the body of Christ. It's the body of Christ ministry. It's you. It's me. Because in the, there's no big yous and no little me's. I mean, in God, we're all created equal. And we all have a part. But it's a condition of our heart. That's where revival starts. Psalms 85 verse 6 says, Wilt thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? So revival is actually in the Bible. It's a reviving of the heart. You know, if you have heart problems, you know, you're going to go to the emergency room, right? If you have heart palpitations or something's going on, and you walk into the emergency room, it can be packed out with people, but if you walk up to the nurse's station and say, listen, I'm having some palpitations in my heart, you go from the back of the bus to the front of the bus. Because you're in a heart condition and you could be in V-fib. Right? They take you into the, you know, the emergency room and they hook up all these diodes and all that kind of stuff. They hook you up to a heart monitor, right? And they're checking your pulse and they're checking things. And, and all of a sudden, you know, if they discover that you're in V-fib, what do they do? They bring out a crash cart. Isn't that right? And then they put some all over the crash paddles, right? And what they do is they shout clear before they zap you. Why? Because if you're close to anybody within the zap, not only is the person going to get zapped, but you're going to get zapped too. And all of a sudden, they crank this thing up. Boop! Clear! Boop! That's what revival is to the church's heart. Because when our heart's not right, our heart gets out of sync with God's body, and God has to bring revival to bring us into unity. So I got good news for you. I brought a Holy Ghost crash cart tonight. 
And some of you are going to get zapped because you want to, and some of you are going to get zapped by the person that's sitting in the wrong seat, but some of you are going to get zapped. It's almost like it goes across denominational lines. It doesn't matter if you're Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal. I mean, it just goes across. Why? Because we're the body of Christ. And when we all get to heaven, there's not Presbyterian Avenue, Baptist Circle, or Methodist Street, or Catholic Avenue. No, it doesn't work that way. We're all together. Can you say amen? And, God, and listen, the Bible says if one could put a thousand to flight, then two can put 10,000 to flight. There's enough power in this tent tonight to scare every devil in hell in Plant City. I'm telling you right now. Because you're full of the Holy Ghost and you're full of the Word and you're full of power. So revival begins in a person's heart. In James 4, 6, it says this, But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resist the power, but he gives grace unto the humble. The Bible says, Humble yourself before the Lord, and he will lift you up. So revival is actually in the Bible. Not only does God want to bring a change in repentant of heart, it's because see, repentance is not a bad word. Repentance is a good thing. It's a change of heart. It's a change of direction. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, where it talks about the communion, but the apostle Paul encourages the Corinthian church, let a man examine himself. Come on. The Bible says if we judge ourselves, we won't be judged. Isn't that right? Yes. Yeah, so it's a condition of one's heart. And so once the heart gets right, then God wants to set you on fire. He wants to set you on fire. Right. Why? Because He's a refiner's fire and He's fuller soul. Full of the Holy Ghost and fire. Maybe some of you in here are on fire for God. Maybe you've, your fire's gone down to ambers. Come on, hello somebody. We have these times of refreshing that comes. Acts 3.19 says, Repent ye therefore that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. I'm in a room full of hungry people tonight because who goes to church on a Monday night? See, that, that's a good indicator. That you, you showed up to come to the tent, Rabbi. That's hunger. And, and God will satisfy your hunger. He says, Oh, taste and see, for the Lord is good. The Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. Come on, hello somebody. It's not hellfire and brimstone that actually turns. It says it's the goodness of the Lord that leads us to repentance. Come on, hello somebody. Now, are you here tonight? Are you listening to the preacher? I, hope you're, I think he's preaching pretty good. You keep on going, preacher. I think I will. I think I will. No, God wants to start a fire, in, a fire in people. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, John the Baptist said, I indeed baptize you with water into repentance, saying that you should believe on the one who should come after him, whose shoes last is unworthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. There's something about the fire of God. It's a purifying fire. It's a holy fire. Yeah. Your prayer should be every day when you get up in the morning, you know, after you stumble into the restroom or whatever, you get into the shower. Lord, rain down on me today like the shower heads raining down on me. Lord, change me. Rearrange me. I don't want to be the same person. I don't want the same old, same old. Father, I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. I'm desperate in a dry and weary land. Yeah. I'm not going to be an ostrich. <laughs> Ignore with everything that's going on. Because it's not in my neighborhood yet. Don't wait to it. Don't, don't wait until, oh, it's too late. Don't wait to it. Listen, it's, it's time to come from the back of the bus to the front of the bus. All right. it's, it's time to not barely make heaven. Come on, hello, somebody. Kissing the ground. I made it. I made it. Me. No, no. Now is the time for revival. Now is the time of the outpouring of the Spirit of God. Now is the time. Because God is moving all over the earth. The Bible says His eyes run to and fro throughout the whole earth looking for someone He can show Himself strong on their behalf. He's looking for you. He sees you. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 says, And you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you to be a witness unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth, including Plant City. Yeah. Hebrews 1, 7, he says this, And of his angels he saith, Who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. Fire. Yeah. 
God wants to set you on fire. Yes. Why is that? Because there are people that you can reach that I can't reach. And there's people that I can reach that you can't reach. And if we're all doing the reaching, then all of a sudden the whole world will hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus. And then we can just get out of here. Come on, hello somebody. Like I said, the, there's two things that are getting ready to happen on God's calendar. An outpouring of the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. unprecedented for the harvest of souls. And the rapture, after that comes the rapture of the church. All right. I am a pre-trib rapture guy. I am the bride of Christ. I believe that the bride of Christ, his lovely, doesn't have to have a black eye for seven years before he marries her. I love you, darling. Here's a black eye for you. You're just going to suffer for me. I want to really see how much you suffer, my bride. We're going to be married soon. How do you enjoy that? Here's my wedding gift to you. Get beat up. Marry you in about seven years. What? No, no, we are preserved from destruction. Amen. Come on, hello, somebody. Amen. We're, we're his chosen. We're his elect. We're his precious. Come on. Amen. Now. Don't touch the church. That's right. Look what happened to Paul. Come on. Saul, Saul was touching the church. Jesus made a personal visitation to Saul. When you read Acts chapter 9, come on now. Saul had letter going to get letters from Damascus, right? Isn't that so? And as he was traveling along, a light shined around about him. The Bible said he fell to the earth. He didn't say he fell off a horse. He fell, he fell to the earth. Come on, hello, somebody. And all of a sudden, he, Saul, Saul, well, who, why are you persecuting me? And suddenly Saul asked a question and he answered it in the same sentence. Who art thou? Uh, Lord. Yeah. I'm Jesus whom you're persecuting. It's hard for you to kick every of pricks. And then all of a sudden Saul's like, what do you want me to do, Lord? I want you to go to a street called Straight. Actually, the word straight means prosper. I want you to go to a street called Prosper. And there's a guy named there. It's, you know, he's there and all that kind of stuff. So you have to understand that God wants to touch you. you don't touch the church. You're his bride. He loves you. But he wants his bride to be right. You know, humility is your protection from deception. Let me say that one more time. Humility is your protection from deception. And sometimes we have to do a self-examination. Come on, hello, somebody. Because God is in the improvement business. Amen. See, God wants to set you on fire so you can pray. A young minister asked John Wesley many years ago, he said, "Why? how is it that you get people to come to your meetings? And John Wesley said to the young man, get on fire for God and people come watch you burn. Listen, get on, get on fire for God and people wonder why. What's happening to you? Well, I'm on fire for your relatives, your co-workers. Come on, hello somebody. Are you here tonight? God wants to set you on fire on purpose. You may, you may say, God, well, I want to get on fire. I, I, I want God to touch me with this fire. Well, I got good news. Get under the spout when the glory is being poured out. And God will put his treasure in your earth. And Just get under the spout when the glory is being poured out. And he'll, put it. he'll come and touch you. He'll brand you with this fire. Shh. So what happened to you? Well, I went to that tent revival during that week. I got branded. I got branded. Shh. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. We must realize that God wants us on fire. Remember, expectancy is the breeding ground for miracles. Glory. Hebrews 11, 6 says, Without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Diligently. Diligently seek him. So expectancy. And it doesn't matter. Don't let man stop you from getting a touch from heaven tonight. Proverbs says the fear of man brings a snare. I think it's time for the church to be bold. The world is bold. Yeah. I, the, the, the world will drop the F-bomb. They'll drop in front of you. They'll cuss in front of you. They'll curse your God. I think the next time you hear it, you ought to start praising them very loudly. Yeah. Come on, hello, somebody. The world, we don't Hallelujah. need to. Listen, your voice is like no other voice. Amen. God's giving you a voice. Hello? Listen, don't ever lose your shout. Don't ever lose your voice. Why? Because the walls won't come tumbling down if you lose your voice. Hello, somebody. Somebody, sometimes you just got to shout. Come on, hello, somebody. Listen, the enemy is a defeated foe. The Bible says he's under your feet. I said he's under your feet. I said he's under your feet. The Bible says he's under your feet. You have authority over the enemy. 
You're seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places at the right hand of the Father. Come on, hello, somebody. Amen. you got authority. Yes. Yes. You're a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. You're a chosen generation. You've come out from among them. You're separated. Matter of fact, aliens have already arrived. I'm looking at them right now. Doesn't mean Vulcan, it means victory. Come on, hello, somebody. Hello, hello. Let me, how many people in here got the victory? Let me see your hand. Come on now. Amen. I see the victorious, the victorious, the glorious, the chosen. That's right. Say, listen, the next, no matter what church you go to, the next time when your pastor says, How are you doing today? and you're having a really bad day, just go. Go! That'll, that'll let him know that you got the victory regardless of what's happening. Can you, can you say amen? See, God wants to set you on fire. That's the purpose of revival. Thank you. He wants to set you on fire. Yes. Hello, so that you can reach your friends, relatives, and neighbors. Listen, they're lost. They're dying. They're going to hell. You have the answer. Yeah. We have the answer. See, what the enemy has done is he's burdened us down with all these trials and tribulations and not feeling good. Listen, I learned a long time ago, if I go about doing God's business, God will take care of my business. Amen. Just go about doing that. Listen, tonight, I mean, we, we have a pretty good crowd, but man, what if what if you got on the phone tomorrow night, I mean, tomorrow afternoon, and said, listen, you need to cut, it could double in size, it could triple in size. Come on, hello, somebody. Are you here tonight? The Lord wants to set you on fire. Let Him do it. How, well, how do I do it? Get hungry. Get thirsty. Not only does God want to change your repentant of heart, not only does He want to set you on fire, but He wants to use you to do signs and wonders and miracles. Amen. Believers shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. Believers shall speak with new tongues. That was prophesied by Jesus. What was prophesied by Jesus? Acts 2, 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and spake in other tongues. It's called the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He wants to set you on fire. He wants you to... Listen, He's commissioned you. He's anointed you. You want to know why the enemy hates you so much? Because he used to have the anointing and he doesn't have it anymore. Right. And every time he sees you, he sees God because you were created in His image. Amen. Come on, hello somebody. We're seated with God at the right hand of the Father in the place of authority. And Jesus is our older brother. Amen. Not only is our Savior, but He's Amen. our older brother. Amen. Come on. And you've got to find this out in the Word of God. That's the reason why you've got to put the Word of God in your heart. Amen. Come on now. Psalms 119 verse 11 says, That word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Hebrews 4.12 says that the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing and dividing the soul and spirit and joints and marrow is the discerner of the heart. And John chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word dwelt among us, the Word became flesh. And when the Word came, it came unto His own, but His own received the night. But to them all who received Him, to them He gave power to become the sons of God. Amen. See, the Word of God is a powerful thing. It's alive because Jesus is the Word. Yeah. So when you're on fire for God, man, I'm telling you, you've got to put that Word on the inside of you because Jesus, when He was in the wilderness, He used two tools to defeat the devil. One, He fasted to keep down his flesh, and then he used the word to defeat the devil. And those are two things that you can use too. How do you defeat your flesh? Fasting, prayer defeats your flesh. How do you defeat the devil? Using the word of God. It is written, it is written, it is written, it is written, it is written. You've got to put God's word on the inside of you. You've got to allow the word of God to change you, rearrange you. You gotta dictate. You gotta act like the word is true. You gotta walk like the word is true. You gotta talk like the word is true. I think the word is true. Can you say amen? So you gotta put it in your heart. The word is a powerful thing. And God confirms his words. Stretch forth thy hand to heal and grant signs and wonders according to thy word, Lord Jesus. God can't confirm our opinion. He can't confirm the Reader's Digest in the Encyclopedia Britannica. He can only confirm His Word. Because His Word is alive. And it dwells on the inside of each and every one of you. You are anointed whether you believe it or not. You are. Because you have Jesus Christ on the inside of you. The word Christ means anointed in His anointing. It's not Jesus' last name. Praise God. Amen. So you're anointed. You're appointed. You're called. You're separated. To do the works of Jesus.
to fulfill that which God's called you to do. Your destiny. We're not here created by God to eat everybody's food and breathe everybody's air. No, we're here to advance the kingdom of God. Why? Because you are the army of Jesus Christ. You're the Lord's army. You're the mighty ones. You're the authoritative ones. We have a right to use the name of Jesus. Because all power has been vested in the name of Jesus. We have a right to use the name of Jesus in our prayer petitions. We have a right to use the name of Jesus in our authority. We have a right to use the name of Jesus against the devil. All power has been given to the name of Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Why? Because God's power is invested in that name. Wars have been started because of the name of Jesus. Wars have been stopped because of the name of Jesus. All heaven rejoices at the name of Jesus. And all hell trembles at the name of Jesus. The angels sing praises. The demons are in fear because of the name of Jesus. You've been given that authority. See, God, we use the name of Jesus when we do miracles and signs and wonders. And when you mix faith with it, boom, things happen. Things change. Your body changes. Well, I don't know if I have enough faith. The Bible says if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, it say unto this mountain, be uprooted and removed, and it'll be cast into the sea. You don't have to have a whole lot of faith. Just a little faith. Just seed faith. Mustard seed. One of the smallest seeds that grows into huge trees where birds can flock and make their nests. See, God wants to do signs and wonders and miracles through you. You don't have to live with sickness. You don't have to live with disease. You don't have to live in poverty or lack. Why? Because at the cross of Jesus Christ, He took your poverty. He took your sickness. He took your disease. He took the destruction that we were destined for. He came. A sinless man, God, and died on the cross. I got good news. The blood of Jesus is sufficient. The blood of Jesus is sufficient. And we use that name. And you have that name. Regardless of what the doctor has said. Regardless of what the financial things are saying. Amen. Has he ever failed you? No. He's not going to fail you now. Amen. Has it been tough at times? Yeah. But he did bring you through. Yeah. Absolutely. Amen. And if he brought you through then, he's going to bring you through now. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? You see, not only does God want to change the repentative heart, not only does God want to do signs and wonders and set you on fire, but God wants to meet every single need you have, regardless of the circumstances. Because that's who He is. Amen. If He can align the sun, the moon, and the earth, that is your daddy in heaven. Who's your daddy? <laughs> he aligned the sun, the moon, and the earth for four minutes and 28 seconds. And isn't it interesting? Over a million people was in the path of totality. And guess what they were doing? Look up. For your redemption draws nigh. Look up. He's coming soon, folks. But what do we have to do? We have to work the work while it's still day for night. We've got to do the works of Jesus. We've got to fulfill what he's called us to do. And then the harvest of souls will come in. And then the rapture will take place. Yeah. We'll be at the marriage supper of the Lamb for seven years while all hell is breaking loose on the earth. There will be many people saved. Don't get me wrong. There will be many people saved during the tribulation period. But his bride, his remnant, the ones in this room tonight, will be taken. And we'll be caught up in the air. Because the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And we'll be caught up in the air with Him. We'll be with the Lord for seven years. And at the end of the seven-year tribulation period, we'll come back with the Lord. Come on, heaven, somebody. He'll set up His messianic kingdom on the earth for a thousand years. Satan will be locked up. Come on, heaven, somebody. Yep. The new millennium will be in There will be a real, real reset then. I'm just going to tell you, there's going to be a real re reset then. Hello. And that's our hope. Because we are none of them that have no hope. Listen. The absolute worst thing that could ever happen to us is not cancer, it's not disease, it's not divorce, it's not bankruptcy. Come on. The absolute worst. This is the absolute worst that could ever happen to you. You're born again, full of the Holy Ghost, die, and go to heaven. That's the absolute worst that could ever happen to you and me. I can tell you so happy about that. Praise God. That, that is the absolute worst. 
There's no worse. Not throwing you in jail, not persecuting you, not torturing you. Hello, the absolute worst. You're born again, full of the Holy Ghost, die and go to be with Jesus in heaven. That is the most awesome thing. And when you look at your life like that, what do you have to lose? Just go after God, man. Just get full of God. Win as many souls as you can. Tell your neighbor. Believe me, they need it because they have no hope. They, they don't know what's going on. You and I, we know what's going on because we've read the Bible. And Jesus prophesied it of the days that you and I are living in right now. So, man, just share your faith. Invite people to your church. To, you know, tell them, what do you have? You have nothing to lose. What are they going to tell you? They're not rejecting you. Come on. And believe me, people are listening now. They, they, they're in desperate. They are desperate for the answers. They don't know the answers. They're living in fear. You and I, we have not been given a spirit of fear, but of love, power, watch this, and a sound mind. Every one of you have a sound mind. Glory. I mean, back in the 1960s, we used to have Salem Simons, right? Remember Salem Simons, you know? I kind of wonder what happened to all the 60 generation. I know what happened. They all joined the government. Praise God. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, but I'm telling you, you have a sound mind. Their, their minds are going nuts. People are going nuts in the world. Crazy. Drive on I-4 lately? Those people need Jesus, and then they'll test your relationship with Jesus. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just telling you. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. They'll test your relationship with Jesus. They drive by and give you the digit. They do. Come on, hello, somebody. Next time somebody gives you the digit, just do the sign of the cross. Amen. 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 You know, God wants to use you in these last days. He wants to fill you up to pour you out. I said he wants to fill you up to pour you out. He wants to fill you up to pour you out. He wants to fill you up to pour you out. He wants to fill you up to pour you out. You ready for this? There are mothers praying for you to come across their sons and daughters to share your faith with them. You are an answer to prayer. Somebody else's prayer. I'm telling you right now, you're an answer to somebody else's prayer. And that's the reason why God is drawing you. And you can feel it. Can y'all feel it in your spirit that God is drawing you? I mean, is it, you, can hear, you can hear him whisper, come closer to me. Spend time with me. I'm coming soon. Share your faith. Do the work of the Lord. Do my work that I commissioned you to do. I'll be with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll never relax my hold on me. I will be with you at the nighttime. I will be with you during the daytime. I will be with you while you sleep. I'll be with you while you're awake. Just go and do what I ask you to do. Go ahead. Don't be concerned about it. Don't be concerned if they reject you. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me, the message that you're giving them. You go. You tell them. Come on, we sing that old song. Go tell it on the mountain. Over the hills and everywhere go, tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is Lord. Why don't you go tell it on the Right? Come on now. You're maybe the only Jesus anybody ever sees. You're his mouthpiece. You're his hands. You're his feet. And that's what revival does. It brings you back to the place where you first fell in love with Jesus. The first time when you asked Christ to come into your heart, and you became a new creature in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And regardless of where your relationship is with the Lord right now, you're here by divine appointment to hear this message today to encourage you. The, the harvest is is right. Don't be a part of the labors of few. Be part of the labors of many. The harvest is right. It's so easy now to share people's faith. I'll pray. Can I pray for you? Just say, oh, can I pray for you? It looks like you're having your own. Most people today aren't rejecting me. Please pray for me. So, that's what revival is. Spiritual hunger triggers the move of God. If you're not hungry, get hungry. If you're not thirsty, get thirsty. Say, Dr. Jack, I'm hungry. We'll get hungrier. Dr. Jack, I'm thirsty. We'll get more thirsty. Just get on fire.
fire for God. And he'll do a work on the inside. Can you say amen? amen. Come on, stand to your feet if you would, please. Every head bowed, every eye closed. We're going to pray for some people here in a moment, but let me, let me do this first. Get Alicia to come and play the keyboard or something. Somebody come play the keyboard. Nick. Every head bowed, every eye closed, if you would, please. If you're in this place tonight, are you 100% sure that if you were to die tonight, God forbid, that you'd make heaven? If you were to be asked, hey, listen, if you were to die tonight, would you go to heaven? And you'd say, well, I think I would. I'm pretty sure. You can know 100% to me. Maybe in this place at one time you asked Christ to come into your heart, but somehow, some way, you have fallen away from God. Your first love is not there anymore. Somehow the things of the world have pulled you in. You got one foot in the world, one foot in the, with God, and it's just, you're not on fire like you used to be. Maybe you're in this place tonight. The devil's been lying to you. You're not saved. You're not saved. Look at the things that you do. How can you be saved and do the things that you do? With every head bowed, every right close, if you would, please. The first thing is this. If you've never asked Christ to come into your heart, I'm talking about the Jesus that I talked about tonight. If you've never done that, and you'd like to do that tonight because I'm going to say a general prayer. Look at what's happening in the world. Don't, don't be blinded by what's happening in the world and thinking, I'm good, I'm good. Everything good with me, I'm good. It's all good. I don't know if I need God or not. It's all good. If you've never asked Christ to come into your heart and you say, Dr. Jack, tonight I'd like to Receive Christ into my heart with every head bowed and every eye closed. If you would slip your hand up real quickly, is there anyone tonight? Thank you, Jesus. All right, the second thing is this. Maybe at one time you asked Jesus to come into your heart, but somehow, some way, you've lost your, your way. You're no longer on fire like you used to be. There's not, there's not that passion for, for Christ. There's not that passion that you had when, when you first got born again. Somehow, some way, the things of the world have kind of pulled you away from your first love. You say, Dr. Jack, tonight I'd like to rededicate my life to God. I'm going to pray a general prayer here in a moment. But if yeah, that's you, would you slip your hand up real quickly? Is there anybody? Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. I need to get back to that place where I fell in love with Jesus. The third thing is this. Are you 100% sure that if you were to die tonight, that you'd make heaven? You're ready to stand before the throne of God and be held accountable for everything that you've done on this earth while you've been here. You're living a pure and holy life. You've forgiven everybody that's hurt you. You live a repentant lifestyle. There's passion on the inside of you. You're on fire for God. And you have an assurance. Maybe you don't have an assurance. Could there be a possibility that you're not 100% sure? Well, tonight you can know for 100% sure. If that's you, you want to make 100% sure. Would you just leave your hand up real quickly? Is there anybody here tonight? Thank you, Jesus. If you didn't lift your hand on salvation, didn't lift your hand on rededication, didn't lift your hand to make sure, you said, Dr. Jack, you know what? I want to be included in that prayer. You're going to pray. Would you include me in that prayer for those three things? If that's you, just slip your hand up real quickly. Include me in that prayer. I want to be included. Thank you. Thank you. I want to be included in that prayer. That you're going to pray. Thank you. I want to be included. Just include me in that. And why are you going to pray those three things? Salvation, rededication, to make sure. If you didn't lift your hand on those three things, but you want to be included in the prayer, then I'm going to pray here. Because it's okay to make sure that everything's right between you and the Lord. Because a God reality is getting ready to fall in this place tonight. The Holy Ghost is going to fall in this place to confirm the word that was preached tonight. Because He's going to confirm His word with signs and wonders. There's going to be some healings tonight. There's going to be some miracles tonight. 
pain is going to leave bodies tonight. But we, we just need to do this. You didn't lift your hand on salvation, rededication, make sure. But you want to be included. If you haven't lifted your hand already, but you want to be included in the prayer, I'm going to pray. Just slip your hand up real quickly. I'm going to give it one more time, and then we're going to close it up. Okay. Everybody look at me, please. There were several of you that lifted your hand. You've chosen wisely. It's a wise thing. It's okay to make sure that everything's okay between you and the Lord. You'll be standing before the throne of God knowing that everything is right with Him. That's the most wonderful feeling. Even though you feel guilty, you feel bad because you make a mistake, but He's not looking at perfection. He's looking at your heart. Because man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. And there's no shame in making sure that everything is right with the Lord because you might not be promised tomorrow. And you don't want to wait. You want to make sure. We're right on the verge of the rapture. We're right on the verge of Jesus coming in. Us. We're right on the verge. All of the signs are there. The prophetic utterances have, become, have almost come to pass. I'm just telling you. You cannot see that. Then you need to give your heart to Jesus because you're blind and you need to see him. So if you lifted your hand on any invitation, salvation, re-education, to make sure, or you want to be included in that prayer, could you step out of your seat and meet me up here, if you would, please? Just come on. Just come on up here, if you would. Just come on. Just come on up here. Come on up. Nothing wrong with Nothing wrong with making sure that everything's okay between you and Jesus. Nothing wrong whatsoever with that. Because it's between you and the Lord and the Lord and you. It's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Those of you in the congregation, would you do me a favor? My, my primary gifting is an evangelist. We do, we do huge miracle healing crusades in Latin America. Upwards to 40,000 people in our meetings overseas. My secondary gifting is a pastor. But my primary gift is an evangelist. Life Family Church came out of Jack Myers Ministries. Jack Myers Ministries did not come out of Life Family Church. I've been in the ministry 28 years, going on 29 years. Our church has only been around for 14 years. So I've traveled all over the United States. I've traveled in all of Latin American countries. We've done huge crusades. In 28 years, over a million people have given their hearts to Jesus Christ. That is a, that is a fact. That's not evangelistically speaking. <laughs> that is a fact. And so sometimes, you know, some people get a little intimidated when, you, when they have to move forward. But here's the deal. Those of you in the congregation, will you turn to your neighbor and say, Hey, listen, do you need to go forward for the prayer? And then if they say, yeah, grab them by the hand and walk them up. Just ask them right now, if you would, please. Just ask them. Do you need to go? Do you need to go up? Just ask them. Thank you. And, this, and hold them by the hand and say, hey, I'll, I'll walk with you. Because sometimes people get a little intimidated. You know, I'll walk with you. Just grab them by the hand and say, okay. So, they, so they're not alone. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to give you 10 seconds. That's great. That's great. Okay, we're going to give you another 10 seconds. We start the clock over. Nine, eight, seven. If your heart is pounding, should I go? Should I stay? Should I go? Should I stay? That's the Holy Ghost touching your heart right now. You, you should move. Don't, don't reject that. That's what that is. Don't, don't white knuckle the seat in front of you. A new 10 seconds, 10 seconds more. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Oh, great, wonderful. That's one more. Another 10 seconds. Nine, 
ordained. You know what? I have, to, I have to share a story with you. Dr. Rodney Howard Brown is my pastor, Pastor Rodney. When he went, when he did New, New Great Awakening New York, he had crowds, but they didn't fill the whole stadium. One particular night, he had an altar call, and it was people were moving kind of slow to go forward because the Lord was dealing with them. And all of a sudden, toward the end of the altar call, he was about to close it, and a young man came from a balcony, he walked all the way down, and suddenly Pastor Rodney said, I feel a release. Well, that night after the meeting, that young man, after he received Jesus, was going on to an on-ramp of the interstate, and a drunk man came down the on-ramp, and they hit head on. And that young man was killed instantly. And if Pastor Rodney hadn't waited, that young man would have split hell wide open. But because he waited, and when that young man came down, because that young man didn't know, he was 19 years old, that young man did not know that that was going to be his last day on earth. So one more time, is there anybody else? It's okay. All right, three, two, one. one. Those of you standing here, look at me, please. If you look at me, look at me. What do you come for? Come, doesn't come from any man. It's between you and Jesus. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong whatsoever. It's not that you're not missing the Lord, but you heard him. So I'm going to lead you in a general prayer for those three things. Like you've chosen wisely. There's nothing wrong. I even go to the altar at times because I got to get things right. Even as a minister, my wife hits the altar at times because sometimes we're just doing a soul search. We're doing something on the inside. It's not that we don't love Jesus. Come on, hello. But we're doing this. Oh, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I feel the presence of the Lord feel the presence of the Lord here. It's just making sure everything is okay and that we're great between God because He is coming back. So those of you standing here, if you would please lift one hand toward heaven, if you would. That's where your help comes from. And just say this after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That He died on a cross for me and He shed His blood for my sins. I open the door of my heart in Jesus, I ask you to come into my life. I make you my Lord and my Savior. Not just my Savior, but my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for touching my heart tonight. I ask you right now, forgive me of all my sins. Cleanse me from unrighteousness. I rededicate my life to you now. Set my life on fire for you. I know now, if I were to die tonight, I would be with you in heaven. Because Jesus is in my heart. My sins have been forgiven. And I'm in right relationship. Satan, I serve you notice. Come on, Satan, I serve you notice. You are under my feet. I belong to God. And God belongs to me. I remind you, me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Father, if I stumble and I fall, I will not run from you, but I will run to you, no matter how bad I feel. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for touching my heart tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on and lift your hands toward heaven. I want to pray for some of you. Hallelujah. I want to pray for those that might need healing in your body. Let me pray for these. For Father, let the fire of God come on right now. In Jesus' name, that's it. Let the fire of God come on. In the name of Jesus, fuego de Dios, Espíritu. Fuego, fuego, fuego de Dios, Espíritu Santo. Fuego. Receive it, Espíritu. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. Receive it, receive. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Come on, you now, Trevor. That's it. That's the fire of God. That's the fire of God. Take that, man. That's the fire of God. Take it to I'll be filled in Jesus' name. That's it, my man. Christoph.
fuego de Dios, Espíritu. Es fuego de Dios, Espíritu Santo. En el nombre de Cristo, fuego. Arthritis. Somebody's dealing with arthritis. You have arthritis in your hands, knees, or wrist, or something. There's arthritis. Who's, who has arthritis? Come, 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 come. Arthritis, joint pain. And, uh, Jesus is going to heal you. Enough is enough. Come and line up if you would. Arthritis. High blood pressure. One, two, three, maybe four people have high blood pressure. If you have a high blood pressure, come right now. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke this arthritis in the bones. I command you in the name of Jesus, leave all the pain. I rebuke the pain. In the, there it goes right now in Jesus' name. That's it. That's it right now. I rebuke that pain. I rebuke it. I rebuke it. I rebuke that pain in your body. By the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. By the name of Jesus. I rebuke it. I rebuke it in Jesus' name. Jesus is more powerful in the name of Jesus. All the pain goes. All the pain leaves your body now in Jesus' name. Diabetes. Hypoglycemia. Pancreas issues. Who has that? Dealing with sugar issues in your body. Highs and lows, sugar issues. Where, where the heart, or heart, blood pressure ones. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. God wants to heal you. I know I'm not missing it. I'm telling you. I've been doing this way too long. Way too long. Touch. Touch in Jesus' name. Toca Jesús. Toca Jesús. Fuego de Dios. Fuego de Espíritu Santo. Venga aquí Dios. Hallelujah. There's a hearing problem. I think it's in the right ear. Right ear. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command in Jesus' name for that ear to pop open right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Who else has a hearing issue? All right. I was in a service. Cherryvale, Kansas, many, many years ago. Many years ago. Hey, how do you feel? Hold on, I'll get to that story. How do you feel? Blessed. Is there any pain? Not right now. Okay, all right. Well, we'll move around. I mean, where was the pain? Well, I always have it in my hands. Okay. In your lower back and hands. Touch your knees. How, okay, how's your back? All right, come on back up, sister. How's that feel? It feels good. Would that have been painful to do that? Usually. I'll do it one more time. But you couldn't do that? I could do it. But you could do it. I could do it. It just that it, it's so hard. So, and now? It's, it doesn't hurt as much, but I feel it. Yeah. Do it again. <laughs> Listen, he's the great physician. Come on now, he's the bone of Gilead. Listen, when you've had pain in your back and pain, you look surprised. I'm blessed. I'm happy. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. See how blessed when you are? Fuego de Dios, Espíritu Santo, fuego. Feliz, feliz, feliz. Can we lift our hands and give God praise? Come on. Lift your hands and give God praise. In the name of Jesus, Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. I rebuke this now. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God, I give you praise. I give you praise. Father, we love you. We bless you. We praise you. All right, I'm just going to throw this out before I turn it back over to Bishop. If you're in pain or you have sickness in your body and you need healing, come out of your seat and come on up if you want healing. Just come on. I'm just going to generally pray for you. So if you need healing in your body, whatever it is, come on up. And we'll pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Someone here, you, you have 
intestinal problems. Hey, you, you have some intestinal problems. Is everybody else that has some intestinal issues going on? Man, I must be in the most healthiest group on the planet. That's a wonderful thing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Tracy, God heals you. There it goes, right? Oh, my. That's it. Take that. It's yours. That's your healing. That's your healing. Take it. Take it. Don't walk out of 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 it. Oh, that's the healing power. In the name of Jesus, I give you praise, Father, by the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. I command these digestive issues. In the name of you, I rebuke it now. Leave your body and never come back again. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over that pain. I bind it by the blood of Jesus. By the name of Jesus. By the blood of that's it right now. That's the fire of God coming on you. Hallelujah. I take authority right now in Jesus' name. I rebuke all of it. There it goes right through your body, Mom. Jesus just healed you. Hallelujah. Father, I give you praise right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I give you from all my ass the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Father, I give you praise and I give you glory. Can we lift our hands and give God praise and glory right now? Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. By the blood of Jesus, by the name of Jesus. Pastor Tina, why don't you come? Or Bishop Epps, why don't you come? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise hallelujah. The Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord for Pastor Jack and Life Family Church. Give the Lord a praise for them. Amen. God bless you. Amen. You say, I go there. Clap for the others that are beside you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How many feel blessed tonight? Amen. Tomorrow night we have Lighthouse from Riverview. Um, they are a facility that has been operating for, how many years has it been, Mom? 60, 70? They have been rehabilitating drug addicted, alcohol abusing people. They they come there for, for treatment. Their treatment is Jesus 24-7. Come on, somebody. When I say that, I've been in the intake. I've seen how it works. When they walk on property, the cigarettes are gone, the drugs are gone, and they just begin their walk with Christ. And it's an 18-month program, so it's not a little walk in the park. But by the time they're done, I've watched 40 or 50 of the girls that's come through. Their lives completely transformed, working in ministry, doing mission trips, doing street ministries. It's just amazing. Getting married, starting families. It's just amazing what God does. Amen. They'll be with us tomorrow night. I just, y'all just look so happy right now. I feel like uh, there's nothing I can say. Like for me, it's like, do I come up and go round two? No. Yeah. And God said, <laughs> oh. and y'all are like, just, just dish it out. It's all right. I'm, I'm here for it all. If you don't like it? Go home. I'm staying. No. Okay, I don't know where that came from, but we're good. All right. I want to real quick just say. Um, how proud of my parents and my father for having the heart to do these types of things. Um, this has been going on 40 years, and his heart 40 years ago is that the pastors of Plant City, Florida would get together with him and just have church. Amen. And help see souls saved and lives changed. And the first few years, I was really young, didn't have a clue what was going on. But... Um, I remember mom and dad dealing with a lot of people thinking that his whole, he came into town and he's trying to steal their, their parishioners. And that wasn't what he wanted. He just wanted, he, we're going to go to heaven together one day. We should at least be able to get on, under a tent and preach a little bit and have a good time, right? And I don't know, it's been about 14, 15 years ago. Um, Pastor Jack joined in and 
I think I remember one of the things Pastor Jack said about my dad was, I've never met a man that did a 40-day fast. And he did a 40-day fast right after that. He did two. I don't know how many dad's done. He, he's been doing a lot of 21 days lately, but he's done two as well, he said. Anyway, I just want to give my dad a good hand. Give him a round of applause for getting this together. Amen. Amen. Um, he's like, I don't need all that, but he loves seeing all the people shouting and praising God, and people preaching, and it just makes his day. And Wednesday night is his turn, so y'all love him. Y'all love him and come back, all right? Yeah. Say, so I got something to do. Well, change your plans. <laughs> All right, so we're going to dismiss. We appreciate all of you. Love all of you. You're very important. If you don't have anything to do this week, we're going to be here all week. We're better than Strawberry Festival. Just so. <laughs> yes, I said it. It's okay. Amen. All right, this is what we do at our church. Everybody raise your hand. Say, Lord, Lord bless, us, bless us, keep us, us and bring us back again into the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, shake hands, be friendly, go home with someone, hopefully somebody you came with.